Hello, we're going to take a look at the basics of using Photo Ephemeris Web, that is the web browser version of the Photographer's Ephemeris. And I've created my own account and signed into that account, so if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, take some time and uh, create a free account for yourselves and sign in, and you should land at a page that looks pretty similar to this. The app will default, if you haven't used it before, to today's date, shown up here at the top left, and this location in Timbuktu. I'll show you how to change that later on. So we're just going to go through the basics today. I'll show you some of the key areas of the user interface. Uh, across the top in the header here, you can get to our main website by clicking on the logos there. Then these links here take you to different pages within uh, the app or to tutorials um, and to a page that lists updates that we make to the app so you can find out what's changed. You have the usual account profile and sign in, sign out functionality here at the top top right. You can also change the language. So if you prefer to work in German, for example, you can switch to German. There's a few other languages that we currently support up there. So uh, the main areas of the screen, there's a whole bunch of controls here above the map that I'll talk about in due course. The map itself, which is sort of the main representation on, on the map page. And then a timeline, which lists events for the selected date. And then below that, an, uh, what's called the altitude chart. And you can see that in this small window that I've got set up for the video, uh, just to get the best resolution, it's a little bit cut off. So one thing you may wish to do is to create a little bit of additional vertical space for the map and these other uh, UI areas. You can do that by going into full screen mode here. And that is full screen within the browser window. It doesn't actually occupy the full the full monitor screen size, but it gets rid of the header and the footer. So we've got now, now got a whole bunch of extra space and we can see things a little more clearly. First things first, um, the what, what I'll do just to simplify the information that is shown a little bit further, I'm going to switch the moon off. By default, both the, the sun and the moon are displayed, but let me turn the moon off. I can click on the display settings there toggle the moon off and you will see that a couple of things have happened. The blue lines that were on the map have disappeared. Blue was um, used to denote the, the moon. Um, the events in the timeline no longer include anything related to the moon. It's only stuff that's related to the sun. And these twilight times are related to the position of the sun relative to the horizon. So, for example, civil twilight is when the sun is six degrees below the horizon, etc. And then here on the altitude chart, it's showing just the sun. And because I'm logged in with a with a pro subscription, it's showing the nighttime hours here. That's what this little darkened area is in, later on in the evening and in the early hours of the morning. In this context, altitude means the angle of the sun relative to the horizon, so it's the elevation angle. And what you'll see, I'm just going to adjust the time of day. I'm going backwards, which probably doesn't help, but I can go, here we are, back to sunrise, and then advance through the day. And you'll see the time is updating, the positional information in the chart legend here is updating as I scroll. And then also there are some lines that are moving on the map as I change the time of day. I'll explain what those are in a little bit more detail. You can change the time of day by adjusting this time slider down here. You can also select a certain time of day by clicking on an event in the timeline. So for example, if I want to set the time to the moment of sunrise, I can click 0, 0.537, so early in the morning, and uh, the time is updated, and you'll see that indeed the altitude of the sun is pr pretty much at zero, slightly below zero, because it's, it's when the top edge of the sun or the upper limb appears on the horizon, and this is the ideal horizon without any obstructions, so zero degrees. And uh, the in the timeline here, you can see that little yellow-orange top border corresponds with the color of this line on the map. And indeed, that's how you can work out what some of these larger, the fatter lines on, on the map correspond to events in the timeline that have a particular color at the, at the top of the, the panel. 
so the sunset click on sunset and uh, the dark orange corresponds to this line here so that shows you if you were standing at the red pin it says you would need to look in this direction here which is an azimuth of 293.7 degrees I'm reading that here from the timeline and also it's because I've selected that event it's it's shown as, as the azimuth in the chart legend as well so that is um, essentially a bearing from true north and uh, it tells if you were using a, a compass or wanted to reference it against some other data having the numerical value is useful but having it visually on a map is, is, is probably even more useful for the purposes of planning your photography so what it what I'll do next here at the top left you can choose some different styles of, of map if you're using a free account you'll have I think from memory these first three and open cycle map is in fact a topographic map so when I select that you can see over here there's little hints of the um, contours and the topography of this flat area of desert let's go somewhere a little bit more topographically interesting to explore a couple of other aspects so I'm going to click the search button up here and I'm going to type in Estes Park which is where I'd like to go to that's a town in Colorado not not far from where I live here in Boulder I click go and that sets the red pin to Estes Park I'll zoom in a little bit more and you can probably see there's a lot of mountains over here to the to the west southwest of, of town so the town is is up here um, and this area is uh, the it's the Rockies the Continental Divide and in fact this whole area is part of Rocky Mountain National Park and that's what we'll use for the example in the tutorial today so what what have we done we've relocated um, the map pin from Timbuktu in Africa to the west of, of North America so a few things have changed as a consequence of, of making that move for one uh, we're still on June 3rd so the date hasn't changed the time zone has changed that's looked up automatically based on the red pin position so it's America slash Denver it's six hours um, before GMT otherwise known as Mountain Daylight Time and it's Thursday the June 3rd and the selected time is 12.42 p.m. I'm using 24-hour clock here. Uh, what I can do, I'll, I'll switch it into 12-hour clock just to show you quickly how to do that. So come out of full screen mode, click settings, and let's go to 12-hour clock. Let's save that. Back to the map. And there we are. We've got a.m. and p.m. instead now. So... The other things that have changed, um, the up at the top right here, it, it gives you information about the position of the pin. Um, you can also see that by clicking the pin and it, the same information pops up here. You can see that this is located 8,000 feet above sea level and there are the coordinates, the latitude and longitude uh, of, of the location in question. And if I want to move this red pin, I can click on it drag it and drop it and that will recalculate all of the data for the Sun let me go back into full screen mode here all of this data here of the timeline events and uh, the, the altitude chart data is recalculated based on the position of of the red pin here so if I were to drag it up to this peak over here you'll see that a tiny things change it's a small distance relatively speaking but you'll see that the time of transit of the Sun changed by one minute let's move that back there you go you can see that you can see that the time of sunrise changed and the azimuth values change so the data you're seeing is calculated for the red pin position takes into account the latitude the longitude the elevation above sea level and the time zone that has been detected for for the location now I actually want to look at this area uh, here. Um, this is a, a little. This is the Bear Lake Road, and at the top there's Bear Lake, and there are a couple of other lakes slightly higher up that are a, a fairly easy hike to get to. And we're going to go to a place called Dream Lake. So I want the, to drop the pin at the uh, western 
edge, eastern edge rather, of um, of this this lake. I can also use this button here just to recenter the red pin on the map. So if you've left it behind somewhere that's out of sight now, you can quickly recenter it by clicking that button. That, I was fairly close to the center. I'll just do a fine tuning there, and off we go. So let's have a look at what the sun is doing on this date of June third in this in this location. When I go back to the morning, uh, you can see that um, as I'm advancing through the day, there is, uh, the, these lines are changing position on the map. So let's talk about what they are. The line that extends from the red pin, roughly, well, pretty much due east at this time of day, uh, this is nine o'clock in the morning, that shows you the direction from the red pin to the sun across the ground, so the bearing or the azimuth, um, to the sun at, at that particular time. There are two lines that extend in the opposite direction. There's a thin orange line, which really is just a, an extension line. So what that says is if I stood at the red pin with the sun exactly at my back and looked out, which direction would I be looking in? You'd be looking in the direction of the thin orange line that is going due west. The thicker brownish line, which you'll see I'm going earlier in the day, extends as I go earlier. That's an indication of how long the shadows are. And the, the length of the line is it's calculated essentially for the, for the size of the map. It's, uh, it, it, it's the thing that, that I'm, we call the six degree shadow circle. And there's a separate little video that explains in more detail what that is and why you might care about it. Um, but briefly, uh, all you need to know is that the longer the dark brown line, the longer the shadows, and in particular, if that line extends outside of the circle, the circle turns orange. Um, it means you're getting close to sunrise or sunset, and you're probably going to get some nice, rich, warm, more orange light. That corresponds to the, the hours of uh, what, what we're calling golden hour. You'll see different apps use very different definitions for golden hour. Uh, in Photo Ephemeris, the definition that we use is between uh, zero degrees and plus six degrees above the horizon. That's what we're calling golden hour. There is no broadly agreed definition on what it should be, but that one is, is consistent with uh, the twilight definition. So twilight is minus six to zero degrees. For us, golden hour is zero degrees to plus six degrees. It, if I were photographing this scene sort of, you know, shortly after sunrise, you can see that shadow line is extending quite a way to the uh, southwest. And if you read the topographic map and look in this area here, where we're basically photographing this, this, this is a, a glacial valley, or the, the, there is a remnants of a glacier up here, and it drains out through here, it's formed these lakes, it's, it's a pretty uh, scene. And at this time of year, and at this time of day, as the sun rises, it's really shining more to the, the south west than it is due west. But the valley, as you can see, runs pretty much due west. So what that would mean is that, uh, looking at the top topography here, you can see this is a higher ground, this is lower ground. It means that this southern face is going to be in shadow um, for quite a while until the sun comes round. And so you can see that by the time the, the sun is shining up the valley, I'm at 20 past eight, and the sun is quite high in the sky. It's in the, just shy of 30 degrees. I can see that on the altitude chart legend. It's plus 28.79 degrees. And by that time, the light is harsh. Uh, everything is too bright. It's, it's far from optimal for uh, an attractive landscape shot. Really what you want is a time of year when the sun is going to be better aligned with the, the, the valley, uh, closer to the time of sunrise. You can see that this is a, a sunrise location. Um, the, the sun's never going to shine into that late in the afternoon because we've got higher ground mountains, the continental divide up, up here. So let's work out how we can find a, a time of year that would be, would be better suited to that. We're gonna to need to change the date. And we can do that 
up here at the top left, all of these controls here relate to the, the selected date. This shows you the selected date. You can click there. Uh, you can type in this if you want. So I can, I can say, well, let's put this to July 3rd. And I just typed J-U-L for July and it changed. Or you can click here and I'll go to August 4th. Or you can use the back and forth arrows. So that will take you a day forward, day forward, day back, day back. This button here will take you back to the current time and date. So that's back to now, June 3rd. And then these buttons here are next event, previous, previous event. And the events are, there are a variety of different events. There is a variety of uh, events uh, available, but most of them are moon phase related. And so as I click through, if you have the moon enabled, it would skip probably a, a week at a time, more or less, between the different quarters of the moon. But because I have the moon disabled, it's going to the solstice on June 20th. And then the next event is the equinox on September uh, 22nd this year, in fact. But let's go back a few days and let's go to, let's try September 12th. So you can see here the sunrise direction has moved further south as we get later in the year. We're past the summer solstice. We're approaching the, uh, the autumnal equinox which is roughly speaking when the, the sun will rise and set at 90 degrees, not exactly 90 degrees. Uh, there's a blog post about that. I'll put a link into the, this video for you to read about why it isn't exactly 90 degrees. But here on September 12th, we're a little bit, it's rising a little bit north of due east. And if I adjust the time of day to shortly after sunrise, sunrise is at 641, here I am 10 minutes after sunrise and you see that shadow line that's, that's extending to the west, just due south of west, and it's very well aligned with, with the valley. So what that means is that at this time of year, that valley is going to get frontlit, and by frontlit I mean the light is coming from behind the red pin, shining straight up the valley, lighting everything uh, with nice warm rich post just post sunrise uh, light so that seems like a good time of year to maybe go visit this place for uh, photography purposes now you may also want to save this pin position so that you can come back to it in the future let me show you quickly how you can do that i'll come out of full screen mode i'm going to click on locations up here and locations is uh, saved locations. So it's, this isn't where you search for, for new places. You can search directly on the map using the search button for that. But if you want to save your locations, you can add them here. I click the add button. It's picked up the red pin coordinates and I will call this Dream Lake, Rocky Mountain National Park. You can add notes if you wish here as well. I save that. If I wanted to find that in my list, you'll see I have a few in there already i just type dream to filter there it is dream lake click go and it will set the the map pin uh, to the place we were i mentioned earlier that i would show you how to change the default starting location for the app let's do that now you can come here into the settings screen and scroll to the bottom and under default location if you click use primary pin it will, you, I've just clicked that and you see it updated the coordinates. That means that every time I open the app, it's going to come to this position. And because the pin is here at the eastern edge of Dream Lake, the place we've been working with uh, during the tutorial today, that's where the app will open next time I, I come back to it. So that's probably plenty for this first tutorial. Uh, we'll continue with subsequent parts later. I hope you'll tune in and watch those and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.